Hi everyone, I'm Matt and welcome or welcome back to Refuge Bay, somewhere on the beautiful southeast coast of Australia. Refuge Bay is a place that you can come to get some quick coaching on something that's bothering you in the workplace. And today you're going to be learning how not to be a yes person all the time, but without being rude. Here's a good question for you. When was the last time you actually said no to someone important at work? If that was such a long time ago you can hardly remember, or indeed if you've never actually said no to someone in corporate work, then the real problem is that you can't be at your best when you say yes all the time for at least three good reasons. The first reason is that you're going to put yourself under immense time pressure and you may make more mistakes and paradoxically end up doing even more work. Secondly, it's very difficult in terms of your motivation when you're doing something that you don't actually agree with. And thirdly, you're probably not going to enjoy your work to the maximum extent possible and it's very important for your physical and mental well-being that you get as much enjoyment from your work as possible, simply because of the amount of time we all spend at work. Thankfully, there's a very simple four-step process or model. I'm going to overview that, I'll give you some examples, and then I'll finish up by helping you take some baby steps today to put it into practice. So here's the model. Sorry, I can't do that, but what I could do is, and you give them two options. Again, very briefly, sorry, I can't do that, but what I can do is, and you give them two options. Here's an example of how it might work in a very common situation in a workplace. Let's say your boss comes to you and says, I know that it normally takes three or four days for you to create the month-end report, but I've just been called by our largest customer. They're very upset and I've got to go to a meeting tomorrow at midday and I need you to do that report tonight and stay back so that I've got time in the morning prepared. And let's say you just absolutely can't do that. Using the model, this is how it would sound. Sorry, I can't do that, but what I could do is I could do as much of the report as possible at home tonight by 8 o'clock and email that to you. Or what I could do is come in early and have it finished by 9 o'clock and then you've got three clear hours to review my work before you need to go to your meeting. You can hear the model? Now you might say, well why does that uh, model actually work? It works for three reasons. Firstly, did you notice it doesn't have the word no in it? And that's very intentional. No is an example of a red flag word, and red flag words set up a negative emotion between ourselves and the people we're interacting with at work, and that's not in our best interest. By the way, other examples of red flag words include must, should, will, all of those are not in your best interest. Secondly, it works because it's got two realistic options and 90% of people will choose one of those two options provided they're realistic. By the way, for the other 10%, I've got a suggestion coming up uh, later in this short video. And lastly, did you notice that the formula or the model doesn't have a reason why you can't do it? And that's very important. If you give them a reason why, they can't, why you can't do it, they're going to focus on that and not on the two options. Let's explore how the model would work in some common scenarios. Let's say that the reason that you can't do the report is actually that you're waiting on somebody else to do their part of it, perhaps to gather the data. You use the same model but you change it slightly. This is how it would sound. Sorry, I can't do that, but if you can get me the data, then I'll do as much as I can at home by 8 o'clock this evening and email it to you, or I'll come in early tomorrow and have it completed by 9 o'clock. So it's very similar. What you do is you put the if then you know. What happens if the reason that you can't do it is that you actually don't agree that it's a good idea? What you then you use the same model but you just slightly change it. This is how it would sound. Sorry, I can't do that, but I think there's a better way. What I could do is this or this. Can we discuss that? So it opens up the conversation around the two options that you prefer and as I say nine times out of ten they'll choose one of those two options. What happens if you've been put on the spot and you can't really think of any two options? What you do is you'd say sorry right now my answer would be no but if you can give me 30 minutes I'll go back and think of two options or a couple of options and bring them and uh, we can discuss them. And 
again invite that into involvement. And lastly, in general, whenever you give a time commitment to someone at work, particularly someone important like your boss or a key stakeholder, always add another 30 minutes or an hour onto it so you're always delivering ahead of your commitment. And that will set up a very positive perception about your ability to manage your time. So how do you get started? Well, I'd like you to get started by trying it in a social situation, perhaps at home with your partner. Let's say they come home one night and they're they just on a whim say, let's go out for a drink. Just to practice, what I'd like you to say is, sorry, I can't do that, but what I could do is have coffee or breakfast in the morning, those two options. And when you get your confidence, and I'd like you to take that into the workplace and choose a peer or, or perhaps something that's not important to your boss and try it out on that. Uh, for example, let's say your boss comes to you and say, look, it's not important, but could you pick up some flip chart paper uh, this afternoon because we've got our team workshop on tomorrow afternoon and it would be good to have some extra paper. And, let, and just to practice, what I'd like you to say is, sorry, I can't do that, but what I could do is pick it up uh, tomorrow morning on the way to work, or worst case, I'll pick it up at lunchtime, just to get your confidence up. And then when you're ready on something that's important to him or her, I want you to try it on your boss. So take that first step today and try it out, and let me know in the comments how you get on.